YouTube, what's going on? My fellow diecast deplorables. Crack some cars. Hope you're all having a good weekend. We are here Saturday night. This band is pretty dope. It's still not my favorite Ford Transit van that Hot Wheels has put out, though. I'm not a big fan of these wheels on this van. Um, they're not the worst wheels they could have chosen, but the first release of this from the Hot Wheels Heritage set is the best. That, that livery on that van is awesome. It's actually one of my favorite vans in 1 to 64 scale. Uh, it would be in my top 10, which may not sound very high, but when you consider how many vans are out there, um, that's how much I think of that van. And that's, it's just basically white and then it has the, uh, the Ford graphics, but it's based on an actual van. So it's pretty awesome. I like that one a lot. Although this one does have better detailing with the uh, taillights, indicators, reverse lights, awesome uh, golf graphics. And then you do have the headlights and indicators on the front. So this thing gets five tampo passes, which is pretty uh, pretty impressive. They've been doing that with this car culture series, and uh, this one here also got uh, well, it got at least four passes. I don't know if if well, I mean, I guess you could say five if you count the windshield. I wasn't going to show these because I have a set of these on the way that I was going to crack. But, um, you know what's crazy is uh, I say the first release of that Ford Transit is in my top 10 of 1 to 64 scale vans of all time. This one is also in my top 10. This one might even be in my top five. This thing is so incredible. I, I love this casting. It is just so awesome looking. You have the cargo carrier on top. Um, the tooling itself is okay, but the execution and the build quality, I love how Hot Wheels has been getting away from the staggered wheels. I love seeing that. They need to redo the Fox body and because uh, that's a decent casting if it wasn't for those stupid staggered wheels. You know, they they had that 240Z for a long time and then they came out with the custom Fair Lady or the custom 240Z and then the Fair Lady, which are two separate castings and they don't have staggered wheels and it looks so much better. So I really like seeing Hot Wheels getting away from it. This thing is one of the most realistic looking models I think I've seen from Hot Wheels in a very long time. It just looks so good. Everything about it, the trim, the headlights, the taillights, the wheels, it's just very, very, very nicely done. And there's your uh, headlight detail there. Got the Honda badge. This thing has a, a sick little stance to it. Just incredible. I mean, it's so well done, and it's a minivan. Nice choice of color, too. And then this is pretty cool here on the back. So you have your all of your tail light detail, your reverse lights, indicators. You got the Honda badge, the Odyssey badge. <clears throat> And then you've got the Bismodo or Bizimoto graphics on the rear glass. So, yeah, I mean, overall, this thing is just awesome. I love it. Um, it's one of my favorite cars in the entire car culture set. This is way up there on that list, too. It's probably, for me, a top five. I, I think that highly of it. This is just awesome. It's by far the nice minivan 
that Hot Wheels has ever put out. And it might be the nicest minivan out there in the scale. If you guys know of a nicer 1 to 64 scale minivan, whether it's a Honda Odyssey or a Toyota Sienna or a Dodge Caravan or, or whatever, please let me know what it is because I, I would love to see Kyosho which I know they never would, but I'd love to see them do this van or a Toyota Sienna. Um, I'd also like to see a Toyota um, Sequoia. But just not a lot of minivans out there. There's a lot of full-size vans. Not a lot of minivans. There are some, but this one here stands alone at the top as far as minivans go. And... It's pretty high on my list of vans in general. It's just that awesome. So, all right, I'm going to crack this. I went through tonight all of my Auto World collection, and um, I have 116 Auto World castings. Nine of them are duplicates, including this one, but I'm going to take this one out of the packaging to put it with my other duplicates, which... I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I probably honestly just hold on to them because I really think Auto World is going to be anybody that has an Auto World collection of any size, it's going to be a good collection to have in 10 years. It's I mean, I have a feeling that they're going to be pretty sought after and fairly desirable and fairly valuable. So here we have a 1976 Cadillac Coupe de Ville. We have it in this, uh, I don't know what you would call that color of green, but hey, this is limited to only 2,500. I have two of the 2,500 now. This is the third Cadillac de Ville duplicate that I have. So that's pretty cool. I really do dig these Cadillac DeVilles and the Eldorados. And pretty much anything that Auto World puts out. There's a few toolings I don't get that into, but for the most part, <clears throat> uh, I think it's safe to say that when it comes to uh, build quality and replication execution, Auto World is definitely at the top of the list for domestic brands. Um, there's only two brands overall that I would put ahead of them, and that is Tomica Limited Vintage and Kyosho. Maybe Shuko, maybe Konami, but, you know, those are smaller brands. But when you're talking about Greenlight and Johnny and Hot Wheels and Matchbox and Majorette and all those other brands... Auto World is at the top. The steering wheel on this is kind of interesting. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's like a whole bunch of branches coming off of the steering column there. It's probably normal. I just haven't noticed that before on any of my DeVilles. And I do have all the DeVilles, I think. Don't, I don't think I'm missing any outside of the chase cars. So anyways, there's a 76 DeVille. <clears throat> I got a few other cars out to take a look at. And since I mentioned Shuko, uh, which I only have, I don't know, two or three Shukos. But uh, this one here is my favorite. This was picked up for me by... Uh, at Free the Peace, shout out to Lamar. I haven't, uh, haven't spoken to Lamar in a while. Hope everything's good, bro, out there in SoCal. But yeah, he picked this up for me. Gosh, it's probably been this last summer, I think. Probably coming up on a year or so. And I absolutely love this. I love premium detailed 4x4s in this scale. And there's not a lot of it out there outside of green light. Uh, Kyosho doesn't do much of it. TLV doesn't do much of it. So to find stuff like this for me 
makes me happy. It's a very nice, very well done Land Rover. You have your transparent insert lens headlights. The indicators are painted, but the detail is pretty superb. It is a metal body, metal base. The scale on this thing looks really good. I think Shuko does make the scale accuracy claim. I don't know if they do it officially, but I know it's on their packaging right in the front in bold letters, 1 to 64 scale. And I would say they probably are really close, if not spot on. Here's the back. You have a full-size uh, rubber spare with tread. And then you've got these windows on the top, the sunroof. And uh, it's just an awesome 4x4. The only thing I'm not a big fan of is on the base of this. It has these mud flaps. And those are die cast. They're part of the metal base. So, you know, not that I sit there and play with this in the dirt, but... When you roll this on a dirt road, those tend to get caught up at times. Also has side view mirrors. Um, all of the tail lights and everything are painted. They're not lensed, but that's okay. Just because the detail is so on point. A lot of detail on this car, this truck. So, anyway, so that <clears throat> that is a Shuko. Another beast of an off-road truck is this Racing Champions here. I give a shout out to another one of my uh, my guys out there. Um, shoot, Custom Farm Trucks 164. I don't know if it's Custom Farm Trucks 164 or Custom 164 Farm Trucks. But anyways, he did this. A little uh, wheel swap custom for me. And I've got a couple of more Broncos that I'm going to send his way to have this done. I can't even look at the stock ones anymore. They just, they look awful compared to these lifted ones with the proper stance. It's such a nice tooling. And these round two releases have probably just the best detail you can get out of this tooling. And so to have those ugly, cheap wheels on them. And then you have um, the bricks in the back, which I think is something, I mean, even here with the custom uh, wheel swap, it still has a little bit of that effect. And so that, whatever is causing that is in the base. Because these axles are mounted directly onto the base. So you almost need a, a, a real small spacer on that rear axle to elevate it up just a little bit more to sit right about there. But it still looks a million times better like this. And then here's your front end detail. So the, the grill is totally detailed out. The headlights and indicators are either painted or tampoed. And so, yeah, I've got, like I said, I've got a couple more colors that I'm going to send out to them, as well as a small bag of die cast that he wanted. So, uh, if you watch this uh, custom farm trucks, I. I have at least one wheel donor that I'll be sending. But I'm trying to find another wheel donor for the brown one. I really want some black off-road wheels on the brown one. So I'm trying to find some of those. But anyways, awesome truck. I know you've all seen it. but uh, Oh, here's something I haven't shown in a long time. This is a really cool little car. And I know a lot more about the history of this now than I did the last time I showed it. So this is from Malibu Diecast. They put out a set of Hollywood cars and they featured 
the Plymouth GTX from Tommy Boy, the Chevy C10, and the Pontiac GTO from Dazed and Confused. They put out um, the Time Machine from Back to the Future. And, and I think there's a few others that I don't know of. But this is the Porsche from the movie Top Gun. This is the car that Kelly McGillis drove in the movie. And it's an awesome little car. It's very highly detailed. And it's scaled correctly. Because, I mean, it's to give you a scale point of reference. I mean, it's spot on for scale. Now, the interesting thing about this tooling is that Malibu diecast is no longer around. The tooling went to a company. It either went to high speed or it went from high speed to Malibu. Either way, both of them had it. And then what happened is Greenlight acquired the high speed tooling catalog. And so this car was released by Greenlight at least twice. They're very hard to find. Uh, but the level of detail is probably no worse, or no better, I should say, because uh, this detail is really, really good. I don't know if it shows on camera, but they're not lensed taillights, but they are very detailed little taillights. I don't know how clear that is. We've got your California license plate, which is an oval. That's about the only thing about the car that I don't like. But it's an awesome car. You know, the Porsche 356A is a car that Hot Wheels just put out recently in the last year or two. And uh, this is a much more accurate... Uh, much more detailed version of the car. There's your transparent lens headlights. Speaking of the Hot Wheels 356A, I have one right here. Here's the Hot Wheels version of the car. So the Hot Wheels is definitely quite a bit bigger. And not nearly as detailed. Hot Wheels has slicks. It does have metal on metal with rubber tires. This one is metal, plastic base, rubber tires. It's real light. I mean, it feels like most Kyosho and Konami cars. That's really the type of feel that this thing has. But the wheels are awesome. I think those are prototypical. Or pretty close to OEM and then it's got a driver side side view mirror which is something I don't think green light did but just an awesome little car it's a really nice roller and just one of those oddball cars in my collection that that I don't show too often because I display it with my other oddball cars like the fresh cherries and the uh, Ertl American Muscle. Those are all kind of grouped together um, in my collection. So anyways, awesome little car there. And then I also wanted to show this. Um, this is a car that I got in a trade from Paul Roselle. Um, super nice guy, super good guy to deal with, and he has a really nice collection of die cast. But this is a Racing Champions... 1977 AMC Pacer. This is the only AMC Pacer in my collection. I would like to add at least one or two more. Uh, preferably the Johnny Lightning, which I think this is the same tooling as the Johnny. But if any of you have any AMC Pacers available for trade, let me know. I do like this one, but I think there are some nicer ones out there. This one is metal on metal. It does have rubber tires with tread. Racing Champions historically has had the worst wheels. And I'm not one to drill my cars to do wheel swaps. 
Although these are fixed axles, so I wouldn't necessarily have to drill it. I could possibly just pull these off. I've got some nice green light wheels. Maybe I'll just switch them out. I don't know. One noticeable thing about this car, though, is the width of the car. You know, the Pacer is not a big car, but this thing is really wide. So I'm curious as to how wide the car is in real life. The car made famous to my generation from the movie Wayne's World. And then another kind of oddball car. This is a green light. This is the Ford Focus. I think one of Greenlight's most underrated toolings that they have. And possibly one of their most accurate toolings. Uh, I would put this one right up there with, with the Fox Body and... Uh, um, I don't know. They have a couple of really accurate, really detailed toolings that they do. This one, I think, is as good as any. It's got side view mirrors. Uh, like all late model Fords from Greenlight, it has transparent, uh, transparent lens headlights and taillights. Metal body, metal base, rubber tires with tread. Now this tooling did come out a handful of times in the Motor World lineup, which they no longer do. Or at least they haven't in a while. I don't think they do Motor World anymore. But they brought it out, like I said, probably a handful of times in the Motor World. And those all have plastic base. But it did come out a few times in the premium and those all have metal base so like this one here is a road racer it also came out as a black bandit and those are the only two premium releases that I know of but it is a sick car I mean just look at this spoiler on the back that is an extra piece so you gotta be careful with that it can be kinda delicate there's your Lens tail lights, awesome wheels on this thing. Just a really, really nicely done car. So there's that, and then the last uh, two cars are very similar. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these because I've, I've shown these recently also. But uh, there's your M2 Auto Japan Miho exclusive Hakoska Skyline. And there's your, your regular release and your hobby or Miho exclusive release. Both of these are awesome. Same livery. Now the the teal color did not come with the Yokohama tires. I put those on it. I had some extras. So I, I threw those on here. That's about the only difference between this and this other than the color is that the red one being a Miho exclusive, it comes with the Yokohamas. That one doesn't. I'm not sure which one I like better. Another difference that I'm noticing here is this one here has that chrome trim around the windows and this one here does not. So you do get a little bit more detail on the exclusive. And then one last thing I wanted to show uh, my sister came over today and babysat for a couple hours so that my wife and I could have a, a couple hours together, which we haven't had in, God, it's been, I don't even remember the last time. It's been a very long time. And so we went to lunch, and then um, something we used to always do 
is go to antique malls and we just haven't been able to do it in a while because we have a three-month-old baby we're almost to that point but anyways went to an antique mall and found this they had the whole train set it's from 1949 and uh they had there's like seven cars there was like the caboose and then there was a couple of hopper cars <clears throat> there was a um there's like a a golf oil tanker car with a with golf um the golf logo on it it was really old the tracks were rusted it had the instruction manual they were asking like 250 dollars but this was a separate piece and i think it's from the same set because one of these just like this was in that set so i don't know for sure But just to, to let you guys know, I'm not a big train person, but it is American Flyer manufactured by the A.C. Gilbert Company, New Haven, Connecticut, USA. So I have no idea. I think this is circa 1949, but I could be wrong. But... The detail, it's all die cast, almost feels like tin. The detail and the scale is exactly what I need, and the style of it, it's exactly what I need for a layout. So I'm not going to do a full train layout, but I will do one of those retired uh, railroad cars, you know, that people turn into little offices or little businesses uh the small town that i used to live in here in maricopa they have one it just sits there's like a, a dirt parking lot and it's like a it's a historical train car so it's like a little uh a small museum or something like that so i thought hey that's a pretty good idea for a layout um the green light people are scaled such that they would fit perfectly in here and so i'm going to either add this train car to this layout somehow or i will use it for a future layout i'd like to use it for a future layout so that i could lay a small piece of track down to have it on the track but i was very happy to find that i am going to do a little bit of detailing on it um, I don't know how much detailing I'm going to do, but I am going to do some weathering on it. But I want to try to find more information on it, because if it is from 1949, it's in damn good condition. So I might be wrong about that. I don't even know what, you know, I don't know what train cars look like that are being made today. So I don't know if this is something that is, you know, I don't know. I just, I don't know anything about these. All I know is I saw this, it was $10. And then the booth that I got it from had a 40% off sign. So everything was 40% off. So it was six bucks. And for that price, I think it's a great deal. Here's a scale reference. I mean, it is scaled spot on for what I would use it for. Now that I think about it, that train set would have only been, what, uh, 150 bucks? I don't know. Anyways, what do you guys think? I, I'll throw some ideas together and I'll put something cool together for that. And uh, that's it, so there you go loving this honda this thing is just awesome i love it it'll be interesting to see how much i like that skyline wagon because i like this thing a lot
die cast is so fun. Still got the gooseneck. All right, everybody. As always, thank you for checking it out. You guys all have a good rest of your weekend, and I'll be back this upcoming week. I've got some really cool stuff coming to me, so there will be some some good content this week. So you all take care. I'll holler at the next one.